Hi, and welcome to the second episode of the A Quilting Life podcast with Sherry and Chelsea. We're so grateful for the positive response that we've had to the podcast, and we're so happy that you're tuning in. Yeah, it it was really fun to get all the positive comments and responses and questions, and it's just been really great. So thank you so much. Okay, so I think we are going to start with a few things, uh, a new find and an old favorite. Yeah, we thought it would be fun to um, just kind of have a few regular features that we do each time on the podcast. And so this week, I'm going to do the new find and Chelsea's going to do the old favorite. And I actually just got a an order from United Notions today with some things that I had ordered and um, they always put a little flyer in and they had these really cute mugs for quilters and it says they're available now so I'm guessing you can ask your favorite quilt shop to order them in for you or look online at your favorite quilt retailer Um, but they just there's a really cute mug that says uh, measure twice cut once and it's yellow and black with a measuring tape on it And then there's a really cute eat sleep quilt mug that's red and white. And then a really cute black mug um, that says it's the thimble things in life. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, it's really cute. And then there's also one that it just has kind of scissors and pin cushions and just little spools of thread. And then they all have little matching trinket trays too. So that's my new find for the week. (laughs) I love that United Notions carries just a variety of products that um, are usable and everyday life. I noticed that it says the everyday collection, which is really cool. So, uh, okay. So an old favorite of mine that I always go back to is the diagonal seam tape by Allison of Cluck Cluck Sew. I use that all the time. I love it. It's my tried and true. So if you haven't um, looked into that or seen that yet, uh, it has been, it saves me a lot of time while I'm quilting. So that's yeah. definitely an old favorite. And I know you use it too. I so. use it too. I actually have a funny story about that. Oh, because, really? Um, your daughter was here a couple of weeks ago and she saw it in my sewing room Oh my goodness. and she said, Oh, my mom has that tape too. <laughs> and I said, Oh, I know. And she says, but she doesn't let me use it. And, um, I don't know if you noticed, but I gave her her own roll to take home. So, cause I had some extra ones that I had, you know, for classes I was teaching and stuff. And with all the classes being canceled lately, I, <laughs> have had extra so I gave her her own role I don't know where she put it but she has one well this is about to get (laughs) a lot funnier because I know she you're right she's not allowed to use my diagonal (laughs) seam tape and I went out into the kitchen one day and had seen she was working on a craft project and I saw the diagonal seam tape (laughs) on the project oh no and I was like, you know, you're not allowed to use that. And she said, oh, no, mom, grandma gave me my own. Uh So that is really funny. That's funny. That 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 is funny. Yeah. So she is very proud of her diagonal seam tape. Yes. Okay. So another feature that we thought we'd do every podcast is just kind of um, a day in the life recently, you know, and so I'm going to go ahead and let. Chelsea start with this one but I do get questions a lot like what's your typical day like how do you you know how do you how do you schedule your day and so and since we're both at different stages of life we definitely have different kinds of days Um, I'm really excited about this because yeah I think our days are definitely uh, very different Um, I still have I have young kids at home and so I definitely have a routine, especially since school has been out for a while for them, that routine changed very quickly. So normally we have a morning routine and we've kept that, but I have always had a little rule that I follow uh, is that I only work until noon. So anything like orders or sewing, uh, the kids 
the kids definitely have things that they're doing in the morning. And so we feel like it's a pretty fair and fun agreement that, um, I'm not spending my entire day working on things. So I always work until noon and then I put it, put it away. Uh, that way I'm able to focus on the kids and do dinner and do baths and, but another thing I do is any type of computer work that I'm working on during the day is always done at night because it's easier to do that, turn on a Netflix show. But I actually have a really funny story because, you know, your kids watch you pretty closely in everything that you do. And just this past week, uh, I found Ashton in my sewing room. And I said, oh, what are you doing in here? And she says, oh, mom, I have so many Etsy orders that I need to get done right now. Oh, that's and funny. it was really <laughs> sweet. And I said, oh, OK, well, you keep working on that. <laughs> so she had a little to do list of things to do, which I thought was sweet. But the girls, they always find me in there and they like to help pack orders and fun stuff like that. But my my daily routine is kind of like that. But I try not to work afternoon. That's really good. Yeah. I know when I, you know, quilting wasn't my business when my kids were little. It was just my hobby. But I would usually just sew when you guys all went to bed and just stay up till two in the morning every day, which is why I probably wasn't the best breakfast maker for <laughs> for school days. But We um, turned out just so, fine. <laughs> so, but yeah, I would sew at night when after you guys were asleep. That was when I sewed. But now it's a little bit different. And I really do like a couple things I was thinking of. I, um, a good friend recommended this book. It's, it's kind of older now, I guess. Um, it's by Julie Morgan Stern called never check email in the morning. And I started doing that, not checking my email first thing. And that really helps with the productivity because then I can go ahead and start the day with the list that I made the day before and get those important things at least started before I look at my email. So so what I do is at the end of each day, I kind of try to make a top three list for the next day and try to get to work on those first thing in the morning. And usually on the top three list is always filling pattern orders that have come in. And um, photography, I always have to do my photography in the morning just because the lighting is better. And so if I have any pictures that I need to take for the blog, I've got to get those done before noon. And then then I'll check my email, you know, after I've kind of done the top three for the day. And I usually like to take a break for lunch. And then I sew in the afternoon. And then what I really try to do is really kind of be done with my work day by dinner time. And just do what I want. You know, we've had a lot of house projects lately. So I try to do that in the evening. But I feel like most people who quilt really probably could just do it all day, you know, and never (laughs) take a break. Oh, definitely. I think it's really important to take a break. And then if I do so in the evening now, I try to do something that's just for fun, like making something that I want to make or sewing with somebody else's pattern or maybe just like simple cleaning and organizing. But I noticed for a while that I was just working so long that I really needed to make sure I was done by dinner. Yeah, I really like that because I think it's really important to take the time to, you know, do fun sewing. I I feel like I have more time to do that right now. And I've, I've finished a couple projects that were just for me, just for fun. And Uh, And I really love not getting up and checking your email right away because I think um, I have a tendency to, you know, grab my phone or grab my computer and get on there really quick. And, you know, you do lose a little bit of productivity if you're just, you know, scrolling through Instagram or emails right Right. in the morning and you don't realize how long you're on there. And so I like that a lot. Yeah. No, I, um, so that's, that's kind of a day in the life and I'm just grateful every day that I get to do what I love, you know, and, and do you want to trade days in the life sometimes? So, <laughs> uh, I think I've <laughs> been yeah. there and done that. You've paid your dues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we got a couple questions and I thought we'd 
we'll take both of the questions, answer them this week. And um, the first one was, what is your design process like? And so I thought Chelsea could kind of take the lead on that one and I'll kind of pipe in with a few things. And then the second question we got was, how do you get so much accomplished? And I'll kind of take the lead on that one and she'll kind of pipe in. So I think that's how we're going to, yeah, those are our two questions for the week. So yeah, I love this first question. We get it a lot. The design process is so different for everyone. Everyone has certain things that they do differently. Some people watercolor paint, some people draw and um, scan those images into certain computer programs. And so it always starts with a little bit of inspiration. I love to sketch things out and I'll go back and um, go through my sketchbook and just pick different things that I haven't worked with yet. And sometimes I'll have already worked with those things, but they didn't maybe work with a previous fabric collection and I can go back and use them for a fabric collection that I'm currently working on. So for us, it always starts with a little bit of um, inspiration and going over colors and then drawing, you know, things that I'm inspired by. After that, I I move my images, um, my sketches into Adobe Illustrator. I really love that program. I know people who use different programs that they love and work really well for them. It's just different for everyone. But after that, after I have, you know, all my artwork scanned into, you know, my preferred program, uh, I just work with those. And it's really fun because we talk about color beforehand and we kind of get a, a good idea of what we like. But then I'll go over with a bunch of new patterns with colors. And it's so fun to go over them with, with you. Yeah. I think that has been really fun. And then we kind of go over, well, you know, w- what's missing or maybe maybe what isn't needed in this collection. And when you can see it all laid out on the computer, you really uh, can get a feel for for what you like and what you don't like. But that has always been really fun. Yeah, um, I always love to get those. Like Chelsea will either call me or text me and say, hey, like I have some stuff for you to look at. Like when's a good time to get together? And it's always so fun to kind of see what she's been working on. And then, like she said, we do like we talk about the colors. Are these the right colors for these designs? And um, we'll talk about scale and, you know, do we need some more bigger prints or do we need some more smaller prints or what kind of geometrics do we want to add in? And yeah, so I just love to get those phone calls and or texts and 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 get to see it. And then then the creative process really you know, gets kind of steamrolling, I guess. Yeah. And then it's fun because we'll get, um, what are called strike offs and we get to actually see them on fabric. And then you go through, you know, another process where you're picking out kind of what you like and what you want to be in your final collection. But I feel like lately it's been fun because we've kind of been branching out in different colors and things. We did that with the Balboa collection, the summer suite collection. Right. But what's also really fun is they all go together really well. Yeah. So it's been fun to branch out a little bit with our um, fabrics yeah. recently. Yeah. We just did strike offs a few weeks ago. And, yes. Um, yeah. That was really fun. And it, it's funny. Sometimes we get rid of the ones we're not going to use first yeah. So then, you know, we, we can pretty much really agree on that where we get the box of strike offs and we both look at some of them like, no, this is in the no pile for sure. Yeah. And so we get that no pile going, but then it's always, you know, we always have to eliminate a dozen or more. ones that we really love <laughs> yeah. that, you know, just don't end up making it into the collection. Right. But I, a lot of people ask me that too. They ask, well, how how is it working together and I feel like we just have gotten to a point where we kind of know what each other is going to gravitate towards Mm -hmm. which is nice it makes for um a good team right so but yeah our next collection is really fun we're excited about it and we've even been working on the collection after that which is going to be really sweet so yeah and then I feel like we kind of do a give and take too where 
Oh, yes. You know, I'll say, well, let's keep this print. If I let you keep that print, yeah. can I keep this print? You know, we kind of do something like that where there's one that she really wants and, and there's one that I really want. And maybe we don't particularly like it for each other, but, um, but we'll always, go ahead and yeah. make those compromises. I always feel very like in the movie Sleeping Beauty when the fairies are deciding if the cake should be pink or blue. And that reminds uh, me of us uh, sometimes when we're <laughs> picking fabrics for a collection. So yeah, it can be really fun sometimes. Yeah. And then lately, like we've both been designing patterns too. And so what we do with that is we just have a Dropbox that we share. And so we can put our patterns as we come up with them in the Dropbox file and we can talk to each other about it and make sure that nothing, you know, because sometimes yeah. we do come up with the same idea for a yeah, collection. Yeah, sometimes we have similar so. um, quilts that we have designed and actually just this morning we yeah. were texting each other about that and I uh, put my new quilts in the Dropbox for the next collection and we had a couple things that were the same, yeah. or we kind of think yeah. alike, but for the most part, we yeah. we came up with um, different things. So right. it's really, it's good for us to do that because then we get a bigger variety of things submitted with the next collection, which right. is fun. And we, you know, we do that because we hope, you know, you you will all love those right. as well. So yeah, and we have different perspectives for our quilts. Definitely. And so I think... Between the two of us, we can get a well-rounded mix of patterns. Yeah. And, yeah. So should we move on to that other question then? Yeah. Or, so how do you get so much accomplished? As I was thinking about how to answer this one, the first thing I thought of was, for me especially, I work in, I do block scheduling with my days too. So if I'm going to sew, I'm going to sew for hours. You know, and if I'm going to do computer work, I'm going to do computer work for hours. But sometimes I will do a lot of sewing and it will actually give me projects to share for a few weeks. And so I think maybe I've made them over a three day period, but then people see them showing up and they think that maybe I'm doing that every day when really I, I kind of did it earlier. So I don't know, like, yeah, because I can't share everything all at once or maybe things come back from the quilter at a different time. Or some small things I'll quilt myself, you know, not very many, but <laughs> pot holders <laughs> and, you know, stuff like that. So I first I feel like I'm not always accomplishing it, everything on the time frame that maybe it yeah, looks like. Yeah, just in 24 hours. Right. Yeah. So um, it's just that, and sometimes I'll get tons of things back. At the same time. At the same time. And then I have a lot to share and people might think that I did them all at the same time. But no, maybe one was at the quilters for a month or another was at the publisher for a compilation book and I'm just now getting to share it. So yeah, but yeah, I feel like um, just keeping track of projects, having lists of what I need to do helps me. Oh, same here. I'm a list person. And speaking of that, I follow Seth Godin. I think you probably I do. do too. And he said, tackle the biggest, scariest thing on your list. And what I used to do is I used to put that thing at the very bottom of the list right, and right. just put it off and put it off. No, it was such great advice for me to do that because once that is out of the way, which, which I enjoy those things. Right. Um, but just accomplishing that, it really is so good for me to be like, oh, I did that. And that was a big project. And just also being just for anyone, but also being a mother that really helps me because sometimes I can kind of get stressed about some things coming up, but no, he said, tackle that biggest, scariest thing on your list and get it done. And I have been doing that consistently lately and it has been so helpful. So That's for great. me, that helps me get a lot more accomplished by uh, clearing that from my plate. Yeah, that's great. I need to focus on that more. I do my top three. I do. That really does help. And sometimes I'll have two different top three or three different top threes. Actually, I'll have like a computer work top three. Oh, that's great. And then great. a sewing room top three and then a household top three, which might be mopping the bathroom floor oh, or something. I think that's really great to so, categorize it like yeah, that so. and have that, you know, just on your list. Yeah. So if that's I can, awesome. 
if I can, if I can like really get those top three things that, you know, have to be done. Yeah. I think that really helps. Yeah. So for me also, I, I do like being able to cross something off my <laughs> list. Uh, I, I just like that visual. That's just kind of how I am. So yeah, me too. I, th- I don't, I can't remember if we talked about this last time or not, but I've been known to put something on my list that wasn't on there just because I did it and I wanted yes, to cross I it off. I think we did talk about that I think that we last did talk time. about that last time. So, okay. So what we're sewing and what we're working on. Let's move to that. Well, I'm working on, so we talked about new patterns. Right. That's really exciting because I've been designing those for the next collection. And I also have a really fun pattern that I'm working on right now for fall and I'm super excited about it. So that one, uh, you'll be able to see that on my Instagram and blog soon. So that one's kind of a little bit of a secret sewing right now. I'm excited about it. Oh, fun. Yeah. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you do. (laughs) So yeah, I'm actually just getting ready. You know, the pattern designing is going well. I think I almost have it narrowed down. When I do patterns, I I will do like six or eight and then I'll try to just narrow them down. And um, that's always a good thing because then I have extra things kind of sitting in my queue if I get asked to submit something for a compilation or yeah. Um, so I'll have those kind of ready to go and I don't ever have to get stressed if I have to come up with something quickly. So I, I'm trying to narrow those down, but I'm, I'm kind of trying to do that in the evening and just do some really fun sewing in the daytime. It's, you know... It really is time to start. Don't get mad at anybody. But it's, in the summertime, I always start thinking about Christmas. Like, what can I yeah. make for gifts? So, um, no, I'm the same way. So, yeah. I, and it's time to start some project sewing just for fun. Yeah. Speaking of that, actually, I do have a lot of quilts I need to bind right now. And I love binding at night. So, that's also something I'm working on. Oh, yeah. So, and I have a lot of the bindings already attached sewn onto the quilt I just need to finish them sewing them to the other side so that's another thing actually yeah I'm working on I have a quilt at the quilters so as soon as I I seen this one yeah oh yes I know which one you're talking about so it's really um, pretty yeah and she sent me a picture today actually so um, by the time you listen to this podcast then I will have it probably yeah (laughs) quilted and bound but yeah so and then I also gave her some smaller projects that I had and I'm so excited I gave her two works in progress one was from 2013 oh wow and it had been sitting there and all it needed was a backing piece and so I pieced the backing and then I had another quilt from like 2016 and it just needed the border sewn on yeah so I gave her those two and then some actually I did give her some Christmas present projects so yeah, so that's what I've been, I, it, I felt so good getting those old works in progress. That's really fun. Sent off to be quilted. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, well, we're getting close to time. We thought every day before we ended, we would share a tip of the day. So, yes. so Chelsea, are you going to go first? On yeah, I'll one? go okay. first. Okay. Um, I feel like my biggest tip is, you know, always have... Um, a project to work on for at least 20 to 30 minutes each day. Just, uh, I, I feel like that's really healthy for me. Something that I enjoy that's not work. Like, Mm -hmm. so I feel like that's my tip. It just is refreshing to be able to work on something just for me. That's fun. And so, yeah, that's not work related. Right. I love that. I've seen different people talk about that too. Like, or they have like a daily make or they yeah. either make like one block a day or just one 20 minute sewing session a day. I think that's a great tip. Um, in fact, I know that the, the pin pals book, the pin cushion book. Oh, by Carrie yes. Nelson, I love that. That book. started as a result of, well, first it was Amanda of crazy mom quilts. She was making a pin cushion every day. And then I think Carrie, decided to join in and make a pin cushion every day and then it became multiple pin cushions in a day and then yeah. it ended up to her writing a book about it so which is that book was so well done yes um yeah 
So that's a great tip. Um, I was thinking I should try to do that this summer, like do something 90 days, you know, June, July, and August. Like kind of a little summer, summer summer challenge type of thing. So, and then I guess my tip of the day is just always leave something ready to work on. I'll leave something on my sewing machine, just a simple thing that's ready to sew. Maybe it's already been cut out. Or sometimes it's just that, because for me, when I cut something out, the hardest part is figuring out what fabrics I'm going to use. So I'll just decide on the fabrics and leave them on my cutting table. And then that is ready to cut out. Just something ready to do so that you can just walk in there and do it. I think that's a great idea. It really saves you uh, time, actually, overall. And you can just get right to it and start working on it right away. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's great. So yeah, I okay. think that's a great tip. Thanks. <laughs> I can't believe we're already. I know we're almost time. at our time limit. I so know. we really appreciate everyone listening and we'd love it if you'd leave us a review. Yeah. And we also welcome your questions and your comments. If you have anything you want us to discuss or that you want us to talk about, we would love to. Yeah, we would love that. that. We want to hear you know, your thoughts and questions. And we're just so grateful that you're tuning in and we hope you're enjoying it. So yeah. And I think as we get more of those, we can, you know, save a little bit of those for the end of the podcast and do just do some reader comments. Yeah. And do that as we get going more. And we're, we're also going to be eventually filming this so it's video and audio yes so just want you to be aware that we're yeah. gonna get that ready as soon as possible we had a lot of questions about that so that will be available soon yes okay so also we just want to let you know that our next episode will be monday june 29th we will actually get three episodes in this month because we have five mondays in the month so we will look forward to to uh being with you then on Monday, June 29th. Well, we appreciate you listening in and hope to see you again soon. Thanks so much for stopping by.